This is Nan McKay, and I would like to introduce you today to Heather Seitzwolf. Heather is founder of Zeitzwolf Accounting and the Get Radical With Your Business podcast. As a successful business owner, she advocates that you should start with treating your business like a business. Heather's no shame approach and high energy makes the topic of finances actually fun. She's far from that stuffy stereotype of an accountant. And instead, she's known online as the vegan CPA. Through her background in design, project management, marketing, and accounting, she helps her clients get radical with your numbers. And she helps creative solopreneurs gain control of their finances through her profit advising and business mentoring. She offers one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions, VIP days, group programs, and now a monthly membership where she helps her Rad Pack members bring more cash into their business. Besides money, cash stands for community, accountability, systems, and help. So welcome, Heather. Thank you, Nan. Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show today. Heather, what is unique about Zeitzwolf Accounting? I think I have talked about the things that make it unique, but maybe put your own spin on that. Sure. Yeah, of course. Well, Zeitzwolf Accounting, so that is my arm of my business. That is the accounting part of it. I do bookkeeping and tax work. And, you know, that seems kind of generic, right? There's lots of people out there that do that sort of thing. But I like to say that I bring a fun spin to it. So as you were mentioning, you know, I mean, if people aren't seeing me, I've got pink hair. Sometimes I've got green hair. Sometimes it's re bright red, blue. And so I'm not your average kind of accountant. Now I follow the rules, of course, because you can't get creative in the accounting part of it. But I am a creative down deep inside. I've been I've worked in design and all of that. So I come to the accounting world with understanding how creatives think. And I work mainly with creatives. And I understand their adversity to numbers and maybe uh, spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff. And I'm one of those kind of weird people that I like to dip my toe into both worlds. So I understand them and I can do the things that they find icky and actually make it fun for them. So I would say that that's one of the reasons, one of the things that makes me different. And the other is that I want to bring a real holistic approach to the whole business finances. So, you know, oftentimes business owners, the only time they ever talk to an accountant is at tax time. They might come in, they drop off their paperwork and, and then it's like, see you later until next year. Well, unfortunately that is just kind of too late to really impact the numbers. So um, besides bookkeeping, I also offer advising and now my membership, which is called Get Radical Profit Growth Accelerator, because I wanna be able to help these solopreneurs throughout the year make good, solid financial decisions. That is really interesting, kind of combining the creativity and making the numbers more interesting. But this is only one wing of your business. So tell me about the others. Yeah, so the, um, so the membership and also group programs, VIP days, all of that is around profit advising and coaching. So besides, you know, looking at your taxes and keeping your books, you really want to be strategic about your business. And so, you know, it's one thing to look at your bank statement every once in a while and be like, okay, that's how much money I got in the bank. I guess I can buy this or that. You know, that's not really planning. So we want to be able to look at the big picture. What are your long-term goals? How are you going to reach these goals and putting some strategies around them? So, you know, the world is unpredictable at times, but there's enough predictability that we can set a plan in place and help you achieve that. So, you know, it could be uh, you want to pay off debt or you want to buy a house or maybe you want to 
save money towards retirement. There's a whole bunch of things that go into planning. So it's not just around your business, but how are you going to make your business finances impact what you want to do in your personal life? So there's, I mean, everything touches the finance part of business. So it's really important to get your head wrapped around it. So those other things that I do help you with those things. Do you also help people to channel them into the right business for them? Yeah. So part of my group program, so I have this one uh, group program called From Passion to Profits. And we talk about your profiting, What I, this is my own label, your profiting superpowers. So it's all around the convergence of where your unique abilities are, your strengths, your weaknesses, what what are the the folks that you like to serve? So if you know it could be based on gender, but it could be age, could be other types of backgrounds. You know, it could be like for me, it's creatives, and then taking that and then developing a product or service that solves a pain point that they have that you can serve them and actually make money from. So it's kind of finding all of those things that intertwine. I have a Venn diagram to describe my profiting superpowers, but that's one of my group programs is to kind of, to figure out who's the audience that you wanna serve based on your abilities and your unique talents, and then um, finding an offer at the right price to serve them. And I think that's a hard combination for people, don't you? I know you're on a mission to help small business owners and this is really part of it all, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, I work with people that are very passionate about what they do. You know, maybe they've worked in corporate before and they had something that they were super passionate about. Maybe it's photography, videography, or, you know, web design or whatever it is. And they want to start a business, but they've always worked for quote unquote, the man. And the man was always the one making all the decisions. Now, when you go into business, not only are you maybe doing the work, but you're also selling the work and keeping track of the work. And then now, you, now you're probably managing people if you're gonna hire. There's a lot of layers to all of that. So um, uh, I, you know, I, I like to help people grow their businesses so that it can be scalable because if you're in there and you're doing all the things and you're wearing all the hats, you're going to burn out after a while. So, um, so we want to make, I, I've, I'm not really sure what your original question was, but hopefully that answered it. I think it did. <laughs> I, think it did. I think it's helping people settle down to what they really want to do and find their avatar and find out what they're really good at. And one of the things that you mentioned is going from a career to a business. And it seems like one of the most challenging things today for people is doing their marketing online. And I think that can be expensive in the learning that you have to do to figure out the technology of today. Are you finding that at all? You know, the, it, the world is becoming more and more connected but more and more um, separated, right? So through technology, we feel like, I mean, I can connect with somebody that's, a, you know, I was just on a call today with people in England and, you know, they could be potential clients of mine now. So, um, but now it's like, it's kind of made me so like, I'm like, I'm now I'm broadening my marketing to a global audience rather than focusing on a local audience. And I, you know, I think it also depends on, who it is you're targeting. So I live in Portland, Oregon. A lot of people in Portland like to buy local. And, you know, it's a, it's a, I think it's kind of a trend going on in a lot of places where people want to keep their money local. So um, although I have clients in other places, I do find that based on my SEO for where I'm located, that people contact me because I'm in their neighborhood, you know? <laughs> so, um, so sometimes, you know, with marketing, we can do like what they call spaghetti marketing, where we kind of just try everything and anything. And, and oftentimes it's, it's also um, easier if we just kind of tap into our own networks and really make real great human connections with people because we can be everywhere and everywhere, you know, anywhere and everywhere on social media, but that doesn't mean that we're going to captivate them to want to be our client you know it's 
it's becoming more and more around human connections. So, you know, if you're doing marketing, hopefully you're doing a lot of things also in the DMs, like, you know, getting to know people. What lessons have you learned since you started your business? Oh, a lot. <laughs> well, when you start a business, you know, um, so I started with no clients, you know, I mean, I oftentimes I think people do. Sometimes people might leave corporate and they have, you know, book of clients that they take with them or something, but I didn't have clients. And so um, I, I think that a lot of people are in the same boat that I was were like, okay, now you're like, I got to get some clients. So you just kind of take anybody and everybody that comes to your door that wants to pay you. But what can happen is then you become sort of a jack of all trades. You're not specialized in a certain area. So I think one of the best things to learn is to niche as soon as possible, even though it's a scary thing because you feel like you're going to be excluding people. But really when the more you get clear on your message, who you serve, then your people will be able to find you. What are some financial pitfalls that some small business owners really should avoid? Oh yeah, there's a there's a bunch of them, but um, some basic ones that I find, uh, especially when people are first starting off getting in business, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna do a side hustle. You know, that's a, you always hear about side hustles. Well, side hustles usually mean that they've got a regular job or maybe a part-time job and then they're doing this quote unquote business on the side. Well, as you mentioned earlier, I like to treat a business like a business. So if you are gonna start a business, first thing, get a business bank account or at least a separate bank account and keep your funds separated from your personal stuff. So you wanna always try to not commingle your funds. So that's, that would be the first thing. Another is track everything. So, you know, think about how you want to get paid. And, um, you know, a lot of times people get into business and are like, I don't know, just Venmo me or, you know, like they just, they just want to get the cash. And, and, but if you're just kind of taking money from anywhere, you got to keep track of this stuff because eventually you're going to have to report it to the tax authorities, depending on where you're at, it's going to be called something different, but um, so you want to be able to track all of your income and be sure that you're tracking your expenses because, you know, again, if you're using, you know, your personal credit cards, or if you're just like, you just kind of buy stuff and then you're like, oh, I'll, I'll remember it later. Well, things, so many things happen in your business that you're not going to remember that later. So you want to make sure that you're tracking these things. So, you know, in the beginning, it could be in a spreadsheet. Uh, you could use bookkeeping software, but use something so that way you can track track yourself. Um, another pitfall is not having a big enough safety net. So uh, with COVID, we saw how you know businesses were you know going out of business pretty quickly because they didn't have enough funds set aside to keep themselves afloat the world is unpredictable. We have no idea what's going to happen. So you want to have, you know, if you can at least have three months worth of a safety net, that would, you know, be ideal six months, one year, you know, the more you can put aside um, because you don't want to end up going out of business just because you can't make payroll or, um, you know, you had it one bad month. You don't want that to happen to you. So, uh, set enough money aside. And that's to pay for not only your expenses, but also to pay you because you have bills as well outside of the business. So, so I'm kind of wondering whether maybe it's better when you start a business to instead of funding it as you need it, maybe to set a certain amount aside where you, you actually move that into your business account. And that's what you figure you will be in a sense living off of uh, for the business for that period. Is that a good idea or are you better just to put money in as needed? Um, well, uh, you know, that's, it's kind of a loaded question. So, you know, if you <laughs> didn't mean it to be, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it depends on, you know, if you're going to take out a loan or if oh, you're yeah. just funding, um, but you know, it's always good to have a line of credit. If you're, if you have a business, uh, you know, I, if, if rather than kind of putting money here, putting money there, you know, if you're able to just put it, put a certain money 
put a certain amount into the business all at once and um, start with that and then have a budget around that, that's probably a, a better way to go. Just It's just easier to track. But, you know, I mean, if you, you can deposit money into your business as you need. Um, but hopefully the business is generating enough income as you're going that uh, you don't have to do that so much. So what do you really feel are the biggest challenges for anybody wanting to start any kind of a business today? Oh, yeah. Well, one challenge that I find is that uh, people are not very clear on their offer. So you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're offering, I mean, I work mainly with service providers, but you want to make sure that uh, again, like we, I talked about the pain point, that you're solving a pain point that someone actually wants to pay you money for. So you could have some great service, but if nobody wants to pay you money for it, then you've got a problem. If you um, design an offer that is ideal for maybe someone that's lower income, but they can't afford to pay you much, then you're going to have to sell a heck of a lot more of those. So you've got to look at what your capacity is, um, can you handle that? Is this something that you can make the business grow over time? I mean, there, there's a lot of things that um, w issues where uh, there's, I mean, cash flow is probably one of the biggest problems for small businesses because there's that unpredictability of the money coming in and where is it going to come from? So, you know, you, making sure that you're scaling at a, a right pace, don't like try to grow, you know, really quickly and all these things. So you, but again, planning is just key. You have to plan and make sure that you understand your cash flow. I think we have another thing available to us today that we didn't have earlier. And that's the amount of networking that is done through Zoom, you know, virtually. Mm hmm yeah. yeah. Women's groups, you know, things where you would never even run into somebody. And are you finding that that's, that's a marketing opportunity oh. as well? Okay. So I'm one of those people that actually loves to network. A <laughs> lot of people hate networking. I love it. I love going into a room with people that I don't know at all and just being like, Hey, let's meet, let's <laughs> talk, you know, and I'm, I, I love to, talk with people and learn about their businesses. And so um, networking can be really great, but you want to make sure that you're being strategic about it because there are so many networking opportunities out there in Zoom land that you could schedule your entire day around it. And unless you really have like a follow through and a plan to make sure that it's that you get something, some kind of return on investment, it may not have cost you any money to attend it. Some some stuff, a lot of stuff is free. Um, but you want to make sure that you're being strategic about it. So if you're going to go to a Zoom uh, networking, take a screenshot of everybody that's in the room, write some notes of the people, when, you know, most people introduce themselves. Who do you want to contact or meet in the future? Use the chat and get to know people like right there while they're on the call with you and find them on LinkedIn or on Instagram and just start connecting right away. I find that that's always the best. And then um, you know, make sure that you're following up with these people because going, you know, sometimes people will show up in different networking groups and you'll be like, hey, I remember you from such and such, but you want to make people remember you. So um, you don't mean it being, I'm not talking about being naggy or anything. It's just, you know, being like, hey, yeah, we met in this or that, you know, just keep in their, mo in their mind. How can somebody contact you? What I'm thinking about is if they want to listen to your podcast or your they they want to do a, your membership group or they want to do the accounting. Are those all on one website? I've got two. I've got a, I've got a few websites. So, um, but the easiest way to get a hold of me is at getradbiz.com. So it's, and you can send me an email at heather at getradbiz.com or just go to the URL getradbiz.com. Well, this has just been great because I have met you through several of the networking groups and it's, I, I think you're just a fun person to be with and I'm delighted to be able to have you on my show. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nan. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I hope a lot of people contact you and listen to your podcast. Yeah, thank you. Get radical with your business. Yeah. <laughs>